Hello and welcome to another Weekly Three with Tony T. I'm Tony Trongone, Superintendent of Millville Public Schools. In this video, we will cover three topics. The first being security drills and events. The second being communicating with us. And the third being extracurricular updates. My first topic is security drills and events. I would like to review information with our families about required security drills and the different types of security events that may potentially occur in our school buildings. First, we are required by law to hold one security drill per month when students are present in our school buildings. This includes the regular school year and any summer programs that may take place. This drill may take the form of any of four security events I discuss in this video. A communication will be sent to our parents and guardians from the school when a drill takes place. There are four major security events that may potentially occur in our buildings. The first is a shelter in place. As you can see on your screen, this event is best represented with a yellow light, meaning caution. When we call a shelter in place, we are responding to an internal or external disturbance that requires us to clear the hallways and retain students in their classrooms. Teaching and learning proceeds as normal during this time. There is no direct threat to our students or staff. Once the shelter in place is lifted, non-emergency movement in the hallways may resume. The second event is a lockdown best represented with a red light. When we call a lockdown, we are responding to an internal or external threat that poses an immediate or imminent possibility of danger to students and staff. All students and staff will move to a pre-designated safe area in their room and remain quiet until they are given the correct signal to exit the lockdown. The final two events that may potentially occur are an evacuation or reverse evacu evacuation. An evacuation will be called when a building is deemed unsafe due to hazardous conditions. All students and staff will be directed to exit the building to a pre-designated location outside. An example situations include fire, the presence of chemicals, unsafe air quality, or structural damages. A reverse evacuation will be called when conditions outside a building create more of a hazard to students and staff than the inside. All students and staff will be directed to enter the building at this time. Example situations include threats made during an outdoor event, unsafe weather conditions, or dangerous activity in the vicinity of the school. For all four of the security events I have discussed, the school will communicate with families when the event is triggered and when it is lifted. If an emergency situation requires a debrief following the event, more information will be communicated as soon as it is confirmed. Thank you in advance for your understanding. My second topic is about communicating concerns and questions. As we approach the end of our first month back in school, it is understandable that our families have questions or concerns about their children that need to be communicated. To assist our parents and caregivers in reaching the correct person, we have created two helpful pages on our websites. First, we have a general district directory with the full contact information for every school and district office. This page can be found in the Connect drop-down menu on every website. Also, under the Connect menu on every website, you will find a link titled Report a Concern. This page will show you the best person on our staff to contact for specific concerns, including academics, behavior, food services, health services, and more. For every individual listed on this page, we have included a link to an email contact form for you to reach out to them. We will make every effort to resolve your concerns in a timely manner, but we do ask that you give our staff time to investigate the issue you are experiencing and respond. And please remember that you will not reach the appropriate people by expressing your concerns on social media. Directly contacting our staff will ensure issues are dealt with efficiently. My third topic is an extracurriculars update. For all of our Millville football fans, we have finally transitioned to online ticket sales for all of our home football games at Wheaton Field. Beginning with the September 16th game, we launched online ticket sales 
with hometown ticketing. If you use the link on your screen or scan the QR code, you will be able to read information about this new process. You will also see where you can purchase tickets on our website. An even easier way to purchase tickets for home football games is by using the Hometown Fan app. This app allows you to search for the event, purchase tickets, and save the ticket for staff to scan at the gate. While we have some time until the next home game in October, I recommend our athletics fans download the app and get familiar with this process. We are planning to expand online ticketing to our winter sports, including home basketball games. We are moving away from cash sales at the gate for efficiency and safety at our events. As for our football team, they are full steam ahead with a winning record this season under head coach Ayala and his staff. Our field hockey team recently had a decisive win over rival Vineland with a final score of 6-1, and our Millville High School boys cross country team member Arjun Patel came out on top in the Open 5K race at the South Jersey Shootout competition. Our girls soccer team so far has a record of three wins and one hard fought tie and finally, our Marching Bolts marching band recently took part in their first competition of the year and brought home their highest ever opening score of the year at 76.5. Great job by all of our Bolts so far this fall season. And now for some upcoming events. Monday, September 26th, we have our Board of Ed meeting at Culver Center at 7 p.m. On Tuesday, September 27th, we have a back to school night at the Child Family Center at 6 p.m. And on Friday, October 7th, all schools will be closed for a staff development day. And on Monday, October 10th, all schools and offices will be closed uh, in observance of the holiday. And then Thursday, October 13th, we'll have our Millville High School Miss Holly City competition. And it'll be held at the Lakeside Middle School Performing Arts Center at 6 p.m. On Monday, October 17th, we'll have our board of ed meeting at 7 p.m. at the Culver Center. And now for some shout outs. For my first shout out, I would like to recognize Alicia Gomez. Alicia is the senior class president at Millville High School and is now serving as the student representative to the Millville Board of Education. My second shout out will go to our parents. Uh, thank you for a great turnout so far on back to school nights, but also at the elementary level, we're having an introductory session with our reading program prior to each back to school night and turnout has been fantastic. We all know that when parents and guardians are involved in their child's learning, student achievement will, will go through the roof. So we need your help parents. Glad you're showing up to these sessions and there'll be more and uh, again, thank you for your support. And as always, go Bolts.